Related Papers 6 to 9. The Starting Place or If God is All, Why Do I Feel So Rotten? Dear Beth, it is easy to pay lip service to the beautiful words of truth while we go right on believing the lie and living it. How many of us have said, yes, God is the allness of all, while we continue like a weather vane affected by every wind that blows? God is all, we say, and evil is just a seeming. Then we cower and scrape before the seeming that frightens us. Does this sound familiar? Of course it does to all of us. The starting place is certainly the discernment that God actually is all in all. This is the beginning for those who want to come out from the endless trials and tribulations of human experience. But this beginning leads nowhere until we act in accord with it. Appearances change when actions based upon them change. The fearful seeming must be faced at some point. It is powerless and we stand up to it as powerless. We make the determination to do this and we are girded by angels from within and without. Then the nature of the threat changes. The sense of foreboding slips away and we see it more clearly as the necessary learning experience it actually is and was from the beginning. This lesson is neither good nor bad. It transcends that division. It is neither a foreboding nor a beneficent reversal of the appearance as metaphysics so often teaches. Reality is infinitely more than the intellectual divisions we make into real and unreal, spirit and matter, good and evil, and the like. But Beth, this standing up isn't the end of our action either. We rejoice and give thanks, yes, but that is only the beginning. When we get through the difficulty, we don't return to it or to our old routines with business as usual. There are more steps to take, more revelations to come, and more strength will be found, all leading us to really discover the child within. Oh, great goodness, the child shows us how to stand up to things. Yes, indeed. The child we are is most anxious to have us get out and up on top of the mountain and get there in more than metaphysical profession. The child within us takes us there in actual fact. There we see the holy scene and take up our subjective scepter. There is no human situation we can get ourselves into that the child can't show us the way out of. The child of light, like the photon, is everywhere on the mountain at once. That inmost identity knows exactly what we need at the moment and gives us to us when we call for help. What is our help? The acknowledgement that the child is still right here, right now, available to help us. Find the eternal Christ child, Beth. You can. This is the first real step, and until one has done this, no matter how many years he has studied the truth, he has done nothing toward assuming his rightful heritage and dominion. Child equals heart equals soul. The overlooked simplicity. I have never talked heart to heart with a single person who hasn't admitted that the child was still there within him, struggling perhaps, or a distant dream from the past, but still there. All of us continue to dream dreams and wonder about soft things. 
the heart of us still goes leaping through the high places of imagination occasionally and soars with the high flying swallows to see the far side of the moon. That is the child at work. Yes, the child still lives. Moreover, this inner one, the old, new child of us, is healthy and well, absolutely all right in every way. None of its enthusiasm has been dulled by the years. Its eyesight is as sharp as an eagle's. Its hearing, keen as a puppy's. And all the feelings of youth are pounding with excitement, exactly as they did when we were children, children, unencumbered by the world. Much has been said about the heart of us. Great theological positions have been established around the immortal soul. Reader, listen with the heart of yourself for a minute. The little child of us, the heart of us, and the soul of us are the same one. Whatever we have come to perceive with the heart has been a recognition of that eternal child within. And now, as I write of this one, I address the heart, the soul, with which we are all concerned. Oh yes, the heart and soul of us, the child, is still right here, quite capable of confirming itself, evidencing itself, and revitalizing our view of everything. As the years pass and the world encroaches relentlessly, we lose sight of this original nature or identity, except as an old photograph or a memory etched somewhere in an inaccessible past. It comes as a surprise to hear that the original child and all its feelings are still around. Then it comes as a wonderment to learn firsthand that they are not inaccessible at all, but still right here, closer than breathing, closer than fingers and toes. There is an ageless mystery in our ability to find identity. As one reads these words about the child, the heart knows this is the truth, a truth hidden all these years in simplicity and childlikeness that we have left behind. When we are alone, we still play the child's game. While we are walking and driving or puttering with the pots, there is some little thing we do in the mind's eye exactly as we did as a child. There are ships and ports and storms at sea when we wash the dishes or take a bath. Don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. Deep inside you do. You see, I am the child too, the same child, and I have become it again. I know by God, by the grace of God, what I'm writing here, and I know that the first step in feeling the joys of the real, as we did as children, is to acknowledge that the original nature of us hasn't left us. The Historic Christ and the Child Bill are you saying that the early church substituted the historic Christ for the child? No, churchdom has limited the Christ to the historic Jesus. And all of that has been done for a divine purpose the church seems to know little or nothing about. Everything that has happened is by God's grace. The historic Christ in linear time came, as all luminaries, to confirm our own subjective self-discovery. The historic Christ is the first begotten of the Father in world time, and the original believers had that straight. The discovery of the child within is confirmed by the Bible 
and its accounts of the historic Christ and his role on earth. The child I am and you are comes to us as the second coming, as Messiah rediscovered within, for whom the Bible and Jesus are the first or external confirmation. Are you saying that the child is the Christ also? Yes, yes, exactly that, closer than breathing, exactly as the historic Christ said. He would never leave us or forsake us. He has been there as the child of us from the beginning, our very child selfhood, which seems to go away from us and then returns to us, rediscovered. Well, William, tell me if this is what I've heard you saying these past few days. The child within is the same historic Christ? Yes, history, like all other things, is subjective. To rediscover the child is to find what Jesus found, lived and confirmed before he began his ministry. When the historic Christ said he would be back again, he meant that each one who understood what he was saying would find the child within and recognize that self himself as the Messiah written in the heart, the second coming in actual fact. Are you also saying that when I was a child on earth, I was the Christ child? Yes, spiritually, and I'm saying that everyone can prove the truth for himself by finding that all the acute feelings of the original nature which were present in us as children are capable of returning to us again. You know, theology isn't going to agree with that, William. Perhaps neither theology nor the subjective groups, but all who feel the child within themselves will agree, because they will know it is the truth, having proven it for themselves. And when the theologians begin to perceive that this is indeed what is meant by the new covenant written in the heart, they will slowly, grudgingly give way, even those powerful conservatives so intent on going back to biblical literalism. Not without argument, not without doubt, not without questioning those who have found the child of themselves, and not without persecuting them mightily. Not everyone will be taken up in this light. Jesus foresaw it accurately. Two are in the bed and one is taken. Two are in the field and five are in the household. Two against three and three against two. Father against son. Those without consciousness of the child will not know which of the senses to believe, nor who in the world is telling the truth. Those who have found the child within won't care what the theologians or philosophers think. We leap through spirit's door and leave the flaming house behind. The Progression of Awakening the progression goes a little like this. One searches and thinks he is found, and grows arrogant in that finding for a time, hence to be humbled. Then he finds again and really knows. One lives this discovery and proves it. One keeps going onward and finds the relationships between himself and the outside. Many people never reach this point because no one has told them or convinced them that there is a relationship between the inside and the quantum outside, or that these two are a single one. One perceives the wholeness of outside because he has found it himself. 
one perceives the relationship between himself inside and the appearances outside in their increasing detail. This has been called the web of interrelatedness. A leaf falls to the earth and the universe is shaken. One comes slowly to know the marvel that will unfold outside from what has already unfolded within himself, and he lives in continuing expectancy of this unfolding in the world. One speaks to his world as seems best. All along this progression, what is faithful to those who have been given him, he tells them to go and do the same and instruct their given to do the same. We and those who have been given us become the new community, the flower of the tree of life, the community grows. This progression happens in linear time, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. It appears I have been kept in the middle of the river of life from the beginning, but only after all these years have I learned my relationship to the world and its relationship to me. I have known what will happen in time because it has already happened here as I identity in those glimpses of timelessness. It is the same for every man. Every man becomes the flower and the flower's seed. The seed survives. Letter to a Finder Dear Jenna, it has found you. It has found itself within you. It is yourself that has found you. No man, not me, not anybody, can take credit for it, nor for that. You are worthy of it, or it would have never taken place in your heart. You are a credit to it, or you would have no consciousness of its presence. What did you do? I do not know precisely, but you are childlike, trusting, humble, open, gentle, caring, and altogether loving within yourself, and you love. Those are its qualities and attributes. Once it has come, it never leaves us or forsakes us unless we lose those qualities to pride or selfishness or arrogance or, like Moses, try to take credit for it. The secret has found you. It is genuine. It is real. But the unenlightened know nothing of it and would profane and destroy it if they could. Don't worry about whether or not you can handle any situation. It, the child of yourself, and God, will take care of every circumstance the human of you ever finds itself in. It is its own proof. Nothing can speak for it except to praise it and herald it and declare the fact that it is. The child of you and the child of every man who makes himself worthy of it is the same child. We look for the real in everyone, even if it doesn't seem present there. We stand as solitaries in a world awash with illusion and falsity. Not everyone who says, Truth, truth, Lord, Lord, is alive, though they seem to be worshipped and praised and become leaders of many. Many who appear to be ahead of us are behind us. Spiritual pride puts us behind those whom we think we are ahead of. Therefore, we treat everyone equally, even though many do not appreciate that nor turn to thank us, but condemn us and say that it never happened. You have come alive in it because it is alive in you. I am full of delight 
because of your self-discovery, and I love you very much. But don't give me credit that is due yourself and God. It is a marvel, isn't it? I suspect you will have the joy of being its minister to many. With it, you can do anything good that is given you to do for it. Watch and see. It gets better and closer and more wonderful yet. It doesn't diminish. I thank you for your honest trust. What is grace? You are.